Hey guys, what is a cover letter? It's a single page print document that you use to introduce yourself in a job application. Hi, my name's Paul Duca and I'm the founder of Useverb. So you're here because you don't want to mess up your cover letter. Well, I'm going to run you through the three core steps that will help make sure you nail it and stick around for the third one because it's a ripper. So let me guess what you're thinking. You're gonna write one page document that's gonna cover all your details and facts. It's gonna be this awesome template that you can send to 50, 100, 1,000 jobs, and it's gonna make recruiters know that you're the best. Brutal fact, that's what happened with it. It got looked at for less than a couple of seconds. So here's the first secret. After talking to dozens of hiring managers, they receive hundreds and thousands, and in their careers look through so many cover letters, they know at a glance whether yours is gonna stand out and you're a good candidate or not. So to address this, many of them just skip straight past cover letters. So should you really write a cover letter? Yes, you should, unless you don't want the job. It's as simple as it sounds. But first, we've gotta truly understand what a cover letter is. A cover letter is a first impression. It's your ability to say, hi, my name's Paul, this is who I am. It's not your ability to say, Hi, my name's Paul, I'm an engineer. I'm the most awesome collaborative robotics engineer. I do blah, blah, blah. If that's your goal with it, you're gonna bore them to death and run the risk of being in the discarded pile. You're more than just an accolade or 10 years experience or six months experience. So in this ultimate tutorial, and yeah, we call it ultimate because we did a lot of digging. We dove through the internet and we met people all around the world in hiring and recruiting managers to understand exactly what they wanted and what they were looking for, to understand and uncover the secret tactics and strategies that they use to identify talent from the list that don't get an interview. But you have to understand and remember, this is all about you. You've got to come along and join in because this is just your very first step. First things first, do your homework. You want to make a list of the companies that you're most interested in working for. Get your dream list together. Then you want to dive in and you want to research them on the internet. You want to research their social media. You want to understand who they are, where they're going, what they're doing. You want to find a way that you can fit yourself into their picture. Working for a company is not shopping. You don't just want to buy. This is like a big step for you in your future. So you want to understand exactly what you're getting into. Now I know you may disagree with me. Apply for two jobs a day. Blah, good luck with that. I'm gonna apply for 100 jobs a day. I'm gonna nail this recruitment game. Well, just gotta remember, there's lots of unlucky people in Vegas. So if you wanna be successful in this recruitment game, dial yourself in. So even if you are successful and you win a job in the recruitment lottery, do you really wanna get a job with a company that literally just gave you the mirror test? You know, the one where they put a mirror under your nose and <sighs> test if you can breathe? Don't get me wrong. There's times and places for those jobs. But if you're looking for the bit that can take you forward, if you're looking for that recognition and reward, and you're looking to find something special in yourself and be recognized and rewarded for that, I guarantee you there's a difference in salary between the bum on a seat versus the future great team member. Don't overachieve. Just because you wanna be valued and excited, don't jump ahead of yourself. Be brutal, be honest, be realistic with where your skill base is and what you're applying for. You don't wanna go applying for Apple as a senior software engineer just because you wrote code for two years in a junior company. That ain't gonna work out so well for you. To do your homework, you gotta know where to dig. You gotta know which corners of their website to uncover. You've gotta know what corners of the internet to scope through to find out the information you need. You wanna scour through their social media because there may be a lot of junk on there, but inside there, there may be some real nice nuances. They're always gonna put up the best of their best and the exciting things, but for what you, you really wanna have a look at those little gaps and those little cracks in their marketing and publications that allow you to have an angle to stand out. Pay close attention to their team. You really wanna dive through and see who their leadership and management team is, who they are as people, and most importantly, depending on where your level of your role is in the organization, find who's gonna be your hiring manager and who your direct reports or reportees will be. You wanna dig a little bit deeper on these people particularly. Now there's some really interesting sites out there on the internet, like LinkedIn and Glassdoor in particular, which will show you employee reviews. They'll show you what other people actually think and they can do this anonymously. Be careful before judging the whole book by its cover. 
You wanna dive in and have a look at what these are and then have a look at how they align to the information you've seen and the conversations and research you do. The bottom line here is really simple. Do your own research, make your own decisions, and if you get your collar up or you're uncertain about something, spend a little time and dig deeper. Great news is if you're liking this video and you're still here, we have a tutorial on helping you understand if this company is a good fit. So what to write? My biggest suggestion now that we've dove through the company a bit, you've armed yourself with the knowledge you need to know to create a personal connection between yourself and the company. Authenticity is key. It's all about identifying you as a person, introducing yourself, your personality, and allowing them to spot that at a glance and go, this guy's right. I can't wait for him to be sitting in this seat here. Just remember an extremely formal cover letter for a formal position is perfect. And likewise a creative for a creative. But don't mix the two up. You don't want to be the creative guy applying for a formal position. That typically gets you discarded. Don't get too enthusiastic. Be sincere and authentic. I can't tell you how many hiring managers get roles from people that are so excited by the opportunity and you know just glowing to apply. All right, so let's get you started. We've included a template here to give you a starting point. Now, a link to it's included in the description below, so download and work along with us or watch this and grab it afterwards. First of all, we're gonna put our name, our email, and our phone number. Dear Peter, this is important. We don't wanna do a generic application, so it's really important to grab the contact details of those people you researched earlier and apply them now. It's a huge part in standing out. Believe it or not, dear sir, madam, to whom it may concern, will not work out well for you. Now, I know there are exceptions to this rule, and the exception is one of those companies that you just can't find the contacts for. There's two options here. One is apply to someone you have found there that you believe might be right, and explain it a little bit below. The alternate is to sit there and personify just that tweak to say, dear Apple hiring manager. Introduce yourself. Let them know the position you're looking for and how you came across this job. It's important to know that there may be many jobs open that are similar at the same time. This is the place to address that. Why you're applying for this job. This is important to show from your digging why you believe you're the right fit for their team and how you believe you're gonna be their future best team member. Here's a pro tip. What's in it for them? Applying some of that knowledge you found in their social posts Take as an example, you've been looking through their Facebook feed and Twitter feed and you found out that they're really big supporters of children's healthcare in underdeveloped nations. If that's something that strikes a chord with you too, then be authentic and recognize it and let them know here. Show them that you too care about this mission that they care about. Don't fake it. Whatever you do here, lines are so short in a cover letter, don't waste your time faking interest in something that doesn't resonate with you. Better to focus on the brand or company or the thing you've found that does. This is also a great opportunity. If you've researched and you've identified what their goals, missions and objectives are, this would be a great spot to let them know that you know how and why they differ from their competition and how you can help and contribute towards this. So if they have a product or a service, this is a great time again to go back to that research you've done, researching the product, finding out what customers have written and said about their reviews on Amazon and Google and social media, everywhere you can uncover information. Let them know some of the specific details that you've already found. For example, the comments in YouTube. This is how a cover letter works. It's designed to make a personal introduction. It's, a, it's designed to, at the flick of a switch, allow them to identify you as someone who stands out from the rest, who gets it, gets them. The next step is to summarize your strengths. One thing to keep in mind, don't repeat your CV. So match your skills to the skills of the job they post. An example of this would be if they say, we need people who can do A. A is one of my skills. I. A minimum of B is required. I've been doing B for three years. Strong focus on C. Tell them your personal experience with C. So if you haven't got one of the corresponding skills or experience levels that's a requirement for this job role, never ever apologize. But if you're close, this is a great opportunity for you to show your willingness and capability to learn and pick up this skill. Demonstrate it. So the final step is to wrap this up but don't be too generic. Don't say, hey, thanks, I'm really looking forward to this opportunity and hearing from you in the future. 
Try to be more specific and try to get in there with something that's authentic and true to your personality and character. Like, I'd really welcome the opportunity to meet with you and speak further if you believe I'd be a strong candidate for this role or any others in your organisation. A second example would be a more caring example, one that would say, I really hope today's recruiting process is going really well for you. And finally, sincerely, Paul. Okay, so just to recap, this whole document should only be one page long. And please, please, please don't forget to proofread this. Cover letters go into a complex competitive environment and spelling mistakes are enough to get you potentially cancelled in this opportunity. Another important thing is to find a colleague or a friend, ideally someone who's in this industry and in that role, who can review your cover letter. Because they might come up with something like, oh, a new and fresh perspective. They might find something that you didn't think about that improves it. But the biggest secret is, no matter what you write on that piece of paper, it's still just a piece of paper. I mean, just imagine you had 100 people apply to this job and you're a hiring manager and you've now got to read through our 100 basically boring or very repetitive letters. Like, are you really gonna stand out if you've written one of them? So let's look out of the box. What if you're really not good at writing? What if your job doesn't require it? What if you're a customer service or a truck driver? What if you're 16 years old and you really don't have much experience to talk about? How are you going to stand out? What if you're burnt out? What if you're just like frustrated pouring your heart and soul into these applications and you're frustrated with just doing the digging on another company? What if I tell you there's a solution to this that helps you stand out and be identified faster than anything else? You see this problem of connecting employers who are looking for somebody with employees who are looking for their opportunity is a problem we dove deep into and created a product called UseVerb. Verbs allow you to send a short, authentic video application. They allow you to open up a conversation and introduce yourself, the real you. You don't need to learn complex video editing. You don't need to learn uploading to websites. It's literally just as simple as point and shoot. You simply open the app and introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Paul. And then you get to add the bits that count relevant to your application and explain yourself. Okay, so here it is. This guy's trying to sell me something. Well, yes and no. Use verbs free. There is a premium version and it's really powerful, but the free version will let you do all this right now. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. It's our goal to provide you the best content and the best products and let you choose. So, if you're trying to write an amazing cover letter for a job you're in right now, this template below and this tutorial we've just gone through should give you an incredible head start and get you to the top of the pack. If you're looking for something that'll really help you stand out, use Verb is totally worth checking out. Seriously, what have you got to lose? Guys, thanks so much for sitting through this with me. I really hope it helps you. If you've got a friend, please give it a share. Please click the subscribe, that really helps me when you do that. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.